Welcome back, fellow scrubs. This is Mark D. Wiz. I'm here with Tim. Hello? Yeah, hello? Yeah, you, you talk like you're answering a phone. Hello? <laughs> hello? Yeah, you're, you're here. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, so we're back with more Retro Mansion project. We're doing platforming engine, and we, we actually have a plan of action. So we're going to go through that and maybe make some headway on the programming part. And oh. I was just afraid, Mark, that if I spoke more, it'd be it'd crash your PC and it'd be scrub out immediately. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, so that's why we're late. Um, the PC just blew the fuck up. And, well, the audio software I'm using is not the most stable thing. And so it crashed, and that caused the whole PC to crash, so I had to set everything back up again. So we're 40 minutes late. That's, that's great. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you're with us, welcome. And uh, get the screen up now, so we'll uh, briefly go over what we already have, and then we'll go over the plan of action, and then we'll try to act on that plan of action. Uh, Welcome, fellow scrubs, to Mark Makes a Better Platformer than Ruckman X Dive. Oh, hold on, them spiking words. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, look. You're no longer complaining. We did, we did find that you could. Um, of course, I fall through the thing. Yeah, so if you jump into the side of a collider right now, uh, it doesn't don't like that. So you can start swimming inside the collider. That's always fun. When did, uh, you, when did you do that? When did I do what? Break it like this. Oh, it's been like that, remember? Huh? It's been like that. As long as you're inside a collider, um, you, you can stay inside. Until you, like, snap out of it and then you're somewhere else. So we've got it so that it, it's tracing tracing the ground. It's got two states. It's either attached to the ground or it's not attached to the ground and it will reattach itself once it con comes in contact with the surface. So, uh, and if you jump into a collider, that's what happens. <laughs> but you can uh, get snap on pretty much anywhere. And why, why is it happening? Because uh, there's no ceiling collision. It's just, it sees the floor immediately and it's like, oh, floor, cool. Except when you hold the, the jump button down, it tells it to detach the floor. So it's detaching and reattaching. You can see the errors up there. Uh, but why, are we, why aren't we attaching to the side of the line? Uh, because uh, the, uh, cause you're holding the jump button. And jump button, whether you press it or hold oh. it, continues to detach you. And you can, you can jump and fall oh. into it and it'll catch. But as long as you're holding the jump button right now, it detaches you. So you just haven't got Okay. That. So that's not I see, I see. But yeah, see if I let go and then I run into the side of the wall, then it will be fine. Uh, so we'll, we'll get to that eventually. So we're, we're trying to get walls to work properly. So right now it, it's just set to trace the line. So we can tell it not to do that. So if we give it uh, a maximum angle, like 78 or whatever, and see, I can't. Um, so you jump. Yeah, I can't, uh, can't scale Actually, it's, it's having a fit when I'm, when I'm pushing into the wall. It's actually exceeding the cycle count. I will address that. It's not too big an issue right now. Uh, at least it's not completely breaking. But uh, we spent a lot of time trying to get intersections like this working and, and that kind of stuff. And that's pretty much where we are now. Uh, so we're trying to figure out what's the most intelligent way that we can do... Um, wall detection and so last week well two weeks ago or three weeks ago three weeks ago yeah that was the last time you we were here uh, we had a problem where we, we tried to do unity's box cast function and it was returning not accurate results and we found out that that's just how it works so last week or the week before i think it was last week i went over why it doesn't work <laughs> because it's just fucking broken like by design for whatever reason so you can't rely on the data that it gives you. And here I thought you were gonna keep your language kosher. No, fuck that. What? Really? Really? This stream? <laughs> what are your expectations of this stream? We're professionals! <laughs> Sounded like it for a moment. Yeah, I know, really. <laughs> it just slips in, alright? The New York just slips in and, and it just happens. That's how it goes. That's how we communicate. Uh, so yeah, we ended, we ended up finding out that BoxCast is just inaccurate by design. For whatever reason, that's how the physics engine works. 
and ray caps are very accurate and box caps are not very accurate so we had to find a way to deal with that and we mulled over tons of ideas and I kind of went over that last time of this is the other stuff we thought about so we've actually got an idea of how to do this now um, we've decided to go with a mixture of firing rays to detect certain obstacles and actually I'll just make a thing here so I can scribble on it of the current drawing. Um, firing rays. Yeah, firing rays. So we're doing firing rays or also doing kind of a box cast, maybe? Or an overlap cast? When you talk about firing rays, it's really sounds like video games make you violent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Mm. I played Mega Man for, Curious. what, 30 years of my life? I'm a violent serial yeah. killer now. That's how it works, right? I mean, he's got a gun. What? Do you, you ever see the, the Mega Man 1 United States box art? It's got a gun. That means it's violent. Bad I shit. Mean, in the US for sure. Yeah, in the US for sure. Well, you let's see. Mega Man 2 and Europe had you know. a gun. Yeah. yeah everything in the, every box art in the US gets, gets to be more badass, more gritty and indie. Yeah. yeah. Like Kirby. Uh, yeah, like Kirby. That's true. He's, he's got the... He had the normal Kirby, and he's all like, happy, yay! And then in, like, United States, they're just like, yeah, let's put fucking mean eyebrows on him! And so automatically, he looks like he's a fucking badass. And then they get him on, like, a... Wah! I don't know, fuck it, whatever. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, back on topic. So, um... We... Because BoxCast is not accurate, we had to find ways around that kind of limitation. So basically what we ended up with is here's your dude and say he's walking across across, across the ground and um, and you've got this kind of situation ahead of him. So uh, just complete that shape. Complete this shape. By the way, yes. if you're curious how, uh, how dive handles being inside of colliders you get pushed upwards very very slowly yeah a lot of a lot of uh physics engine or not physics engine but platform engines seem to do that currently you might be able to wiggle faster if you jump but yeah a lot of them seem to just kind of slowly push you up and i'm not yes, 100% uh, sure why but i just covered it because i got stuck inside the bee blader <laughs> that's funny well at least they let you get out and you didn't have to restart well, in X1, that will kill you. Hmm? Oh, yeah, no, I know. But, you know, X dive is baby mode, so they don't want to kill you. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, yeah, the, the X, the Mega Man X mobile game beta came out, by the way, last night, and we played it a little bit. It's, uh. It's okay. It's not. Don't, don't expect a console experience out of it. It is it's not anywhere near tight enough. And it's Think of Mark, you're saying. That. Don't do the gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, it's gonna be full of loot boxes and shit. I can already tell there's there's menus for it, and like they they give you random weapons and shit. Fuck that. It's not not even gonna bother. So like I might play it. if the co-op works okay. I might play it with Tim a little bit, but I'm not gonna get too invested but, in it. But don't pay for it. Yeah, don't pay <laughs> for it. Fuck that. <laughs> Paying for mobile games is weak. <laughs> All right, so anyway, we've got our collider, and we're going to move him to the right here. We're going to move toward... Unless you want to pay for it. Yeah. We're going to move toward this this edge here. So, the danger... But if you get some gambling, that's uh, just on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, loot boxes have been uh, considered gambling now in, in uh, Britain. So, uh, the, 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 the run is ending. EA's time is up, and I couldn't be happier. So we want to, when we want to move him, we want to fire rays here, so that we're like, okay, we're going to move from here to here, and we need to find if there's anything in, in the way. So if like there's a collider here, and there's like a ramp that goes up, so it can spot that that's a thing, and then go up, you know, and things like that. And and likewise, for the, the head here, if you have like a, a protrusion coming in through your head space, you need to first know that, oh shit, there's something here, and we know that we can't walk farther than this at this point. So even though we could 
walk farther along the ground. It's not something we can do for the head. And then we need to detect all these spikes that are in our path and figure out what to do with them. So the first step we decided, uh, there may be a more optimized way to do it, but for right now, I'll use uh, yellow or orange here. Uh, we decided for right now, the, the simplest answer is to shoot a ray, and then you'll get a point. And then you shoot a ray from top and bottom, so a head and a walking ray, and say, okay, we could walk all the way to here, but we can't walk all the way that far because we hit uh, our head here. And so now this is our new maximum walk distance, where it, if unabated, we would have gotten over here. Now, here's the problem. You can fire as many fucking rays as you want, and you're not going to necessarily hit this point here. And so, okay, we hit this point, and we hit this point, and we hit this point. And so we're gonna like move our character here. Okay, well, good job. Now you're stuck in the wall. You can't do that. And we thought, okay, well, box cast in Unity literally moves the collider box. And well, it, it moves it spiritually. Let's say it doesn't actually physically move it, but it, it takes the shape of this and and pushes a collider, a copy of a collider. Yes, yeah, it spiritually moves it. I don't know. It's not its actual body, but it's its spirit. <laughs> Spirit it's, it's ghosting. Yeah, it's ghosting. There you go. <laughs> so it, it it pretends to move something of the same shape, size, and angle toward here. And it will eventually find this and say, hey, cool, or, uh, we hit a point. Or shape of row making. Or what? Or a box of row making. Yeah. We, we, we decide. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can, you can cast a box with different dimensions if you want. Uh, typically, you want to be at least close to what you got but here's the problem so when you box cast something it um it, it adds a little bubble extension around it and then that bubble is what contacts this so when it's like hey i hit something cool all right we're gonna move our character up to that point and it's like uh bro there's a space here what happened why didn't you move all the way it's because box cast is just doesn't work right for whatever reason it's designed not to work right so it has this weird friggin' bubble around whatever you're you're doing. So we can't rely on it for accurate data. Otherwise, you'll always well, have a gap that. between you and the thing. Mm -hmm. Not just that. Um, the bubble isn't only on the box cast, but also on the collider oh. itself. Yeah, 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 I was going to say, yeah, that's true. That's true. So every collider has this little bubble around it. So really what you're doing is you're... Uh, you're you're bumping this bubble into this bubble so like sure the bubbles like attach here but really where the collider ends up is like this so this is whole space in the middle and it, it's technically small but it's still an error and we don't like it so we don't want to do this also when they collide there's a random distance between these two um so sometimes it may end up here sometimes it may end up here Sometimes it may end up here, depending on how fast it was going. So we don't want to rely on that. It's just completely unreliable. Uh, there's no reason to to screw around with that. So okay, what can we do then? Uh, and we tried overlap cast, and we get the same error. It's still, ha they all have this like bubble around it. The only thing that's accurate is ray cast. In terms of actually colliding things into each other to find data. Um, so we said, well, okay, What if we do an overlap cast, it gives you a list of colliders. So we'll get this collider here, uh, and we'll get this collider here that's the ground. And because we know this is... Cost. What's that? It could be box cost, too, because the overlaps, too, has the same issue. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 could, you could do either or. Um, if you wanted to throw the box forward, you'll eventually get this collider. There, yeah, so the, the gist is the, the ray cost is the only thing that can ignore the bubble. Yeah. So, we're going to ignore the ground because we know we're on the ground. And anything that's not the ground that we're on, there's a little nuance to that, but just to simplify it, I'll say that. Anything that we're, not the ground that we're standing on will be considered a wall or a ceiling, something of that nature. If there's a ceiling that comes in from the top, we'll already find that with this ray here. Um, so, we're not worried about that. 
and if there's a protrusion from the ground, we'll find it with this ray down here, and then we'll start walking along here, you know, if we get to that point. So we're not worried about those. Those are all taken care of by these two rays, but what we're worried about is things in the middle. And there's a full-blown wall in front of you? Yes, so this this is would be a, a wall here. No, I mean if there's a full wall in front of you. Oh, yeah, if there's a full-blown wall, it will also detect that, and then it's like, oh, okay. You still have to check the center, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But, um, yeah, if there's a straight wall here, I mean, I didn't draw it completely straight, but you get the idea. Then, yeah, it will detect that. As long as this top ray or bottom ray hits something, it will detect that. And then you automatically yeah. shrink your move distance from there. But then and you have to check depending on the, the angle center. of that wall, it's either the top or the bottom ray that detects it. What's that? Depending on the angle of the wall that you're hitting, mm -hmm. either the top or the bottom will detect, will detect it. Yeah, yeah, first. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you can say this will detect it first, and this will detect it second, so you want to use this distance as your first, and say, okay, we're at least moving this far. We don't know about the center yet, but we're at least moving that far. Or if there's just, like, yeah. one here, and not down here, or vice versa. So that takes care of all that. Yeah, so we'll basically conclude that it only really matters... Uh, protrusions only happen when the collider itself is smaller than those two rays. Yes. Fit within our body shape. Or at least the, the part that gets into our range, you know. And yeah. because of that, as long as it, it exits our range, we can detect it with the initial rays, no matter how big it is. It doesn't matter. It could be this, and we can still detect it. It doesn't matter. We're always going to detect mm -hmm. it if it's coming into our range on a flat surface like that. But what we can't reliably detect are these spikes here because they're infinitely small in in floating point space so how do you find those well you can either box cast will will get you accurately enough to the point where it's like oh okay we bumped into something and then you can do some math from there to figure some stuff out or you can use the overlap cast which basically just draws a box and says oh everything that overlapped in the box uh, we're going to make a list of those colliders. Yeah. And and the the big thing about this is that anything smaller than our actual collider mm. will have an actual point that we know yes. inside of our space. So if there is something here, it'll catch it because the box is like, oh yeah, I'm overlapping this. Cool. Okay. Or, or, or leave in this. Or this triangle, it doesn't matter. I'm overlapping, what, one, two, three, four, five things. Yeah. We say, okay, well, the ground we're going to ignore because we're standing on it. We don't want to bump yeah. into that. This is a valid those, one, and anything in the those middle. Those colliders? Those colliders have information that we can use. Yes. Right? Right. So you have a list of colliders, but then you can say, okay, let's get a list of every point on these colliders. Okay, so we'll get these. Cool. And we'll ignore the four because we've decided that that's not something we're going to bump in we're walking on it. Um, okay, cool. So now you have a list of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six points off this collider. You stack those in an array and then you say, all right, is there any point that's actually like inside our range here of our range of movement? Did we get anything in here? And if we yeah. did, okay, well now let's just take the closest one from the collider and say that's our new wall point and then you just walk the collider up just to that point and voila that's yeah. pretty much it i mean conceptually there's, there's more nuance to it than that but you know how to yeah, actually calculate but, that stuff but previously um we were calculating um the space in which we check using the box cost itself yeah but that seems that's unreliable we discovered mm. so now we basically have to calculate that space. Yeah, so whether you use a box cast to find it, the colliders, or you use an overlap cast to find colliders, basically what you want to do, you just want to get the points on the colliders. Because we've already determined that the only possible thing that can be inside here is a point. Even if it's a flat surface, it's still going to resolve to a point. It's just going to be, yeah, we're going this far that's it you know say pretend that's flat <laughs> i'm not that drop flat but pretend it's literally completely oh, come on uh, boom if, there we go if it's not a if it's not a point it's eventually going to be a wall or an actual floor you can walk on yeah and so, those are attacked by the rays up top and bottom right so the only possible thing to 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 be in our way right now is is a spike 
So yeah, and it, what and are spikes? Spike, They're points, and we need to stop, we need to stop on it. Yeah, and they're all because points. this thing is always going to be free floating, right? And if we can calculate the points on the collider, we have an accurate point that we can use to adjust. We don't have to rely on the inaccurate box cast data. We can say, no, literally, it's right here. With, with as most, much precision as floating points will give us, boom, there we go, and that's it. And we've we've successfully moved our thing to it. Yeah. So The other thing is if there's actually points on the floor itself, and we're walking across that, we need to exclude those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you actually get something here, you can say, hey... Uh, we found we found a new transition point. Um, in this case, our system will walk up to this, but it will not continue on until the next update. Yeah. So in that case, you don't case, want to hit that swap point there. And yeah. Walk instantly stop. So in this case, you know, um, actually, what it would do is because that's close enough, you would get this because the center point's there. So so this presents our first problem. So what if we transition? We walk to a transition point. And, um, okay, our, our move distance really stops here, but our width is additional, and we did protrude into it because we have the width. So the, the basic idea, and we don't have the complete math down for this yet, the basic idea is we take the width here that we have, um, and say, okay, it's this big, right? Um, we want to add that to how much we're going to move so that we can detect this here and say that, okay, so if we move up to this point like we originally intended to and our box actually ends up being this big, we need to know that we need to ignore this because say this is walkable floor. It's really steep, but just pretend that we can walk on that kind of angle. Uh, because if we do go this far, it's like, well, it's not the current floor you're standing on, therefore I'm going to treat it as a wall and that would actually bump you backwards and it would be weird. And you don't want to do that. Um, so we also need to make sure that this system works even if we uh, change the, the settings for what angle is a wall and not what is yes. the wall. Yes, and, and also if we say change the size of the character in real time. So or we, rotate the character. Yeah, or rotate the character or whatever. So we, we do have to find that. Now we, we've thought um, as a safety measure, because this could be rotated, so what if your character is actually rotated like this because you know you're say we're looking at it uh, let's see, do right about 30 degrees oh okay no that, that works <laughs> so say your camera is actually like this and you're walking down this way um, so you don't want to use this distance because that might not be accurate because your velocity is going this way um, so we decided it's better to overshoot than undershoot so we'll take the maximum magnitude or the, the the diagonal length here of the entire thing and add that to it and it's fine because okay it will find this thing and it will exclude that from the next part that's great that's fine um, it, it could go a hundred meters past here and it will still give you the same result you'll still just find the next one so there's no no danger in overshooting what we want to do now we don't we haven't programmed that correction in yet but that's something to consider as we go forward um, so that's one of the the things to watch out for and there's a couple other things so actually let me go back to that so if you are moving this way um, so you shoot a ray here and you shoot a ray here from your center point on the bottom this could still hit something so you also have to shoot a ray from the top right corner forward to find anything potentially up here. So say there's something up here that this ray hasn't hit, and you still have to detect that. So you do have to fire that ray, and the same thing, you, you could fire a ray down here, it's not going to find anything because you're in the floor and you're ignoring that. Um, or anything below the floor is just ignored anyway. So it do that doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, it would probably get a zero result, and then it, that's how you know that you're inside the floor and just not bother with it. So you do have that. Um, you you probably have to shoot them from all four of them, at least for now. Uh, it's not efficient, but it, it should work, and we can just ignore whatever this finds, because, you know, it, everything else takes precedence anyway. Uh, so that that's stuff to think about as we go forward. We haven't gotten the total math and design on that part yet. 
but those will definitely have to be something that we do because if you are you know moving this direction again there is this gap here you do have to cover that with something else so let me undo all that and just bring it back to the, the standard view here and make it a little a little easier um, so yeah when you do an overlap cast the only thing that can possibly be inside here are points at this point not to beg a pun <laughs> so yeah, all you have to do is get the collider, and we already have a method to get all the points. And then you just say, okay, well, what point is closest? What point would 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 hit this first if it were to move forward? And there's there's yeah, Mark. Yes, you got a point. I got a point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got a point. The point all right. Uh, so the the easiest way to do this may not be the optimal, um, but at least to get it working. We would say, okay, so for every point, um, we can fire it back toward the collider in the, in the opposite direction. So velocity is taking us this way. We take the opposite velocity for every point, and we fire it back at it. And uh, whoever would hit first, whoever has the least distance recorded, or has any result at all. In fact, you could just fire them all this way and say, well, this one will go all the way. And this one would hit here, and say this one won't hit, and this one won't hit. Uh, you could fire them all back, and whoever would actually hit, number one, who actually would actually hit, and who would actually hit first, and you can tell by the distance of the ray that traveled, then you know which one to put them up against, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we, we had talked before about excluding points, and we can do that for optimization. But at the end of the day, you could literally just shoot rays back from all the points. And that should work. You just get which one everyone's closest. Just make sure to shoot in the direction, the opposite direction that you're going. So your velocity is taking you that way. And then you shoot exactly that velocity in reverse to hit. And so that's pretty much it. I mean, you can mark out, like, okay, this is the area that we've actually traveled. Uh, or that we will travel, and any points in, not inside of it we will omit. I mean, you could do that. Uh, do we then um, also only check for that specific collider that is yourself? What do you mean? Well, if we shoot a rail to the left, it might hit a few other colliders away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I should have specified that. You're right. That you would only check for results that are your collider. And you can do that easily. So, because you, it, it actually, what it would be would be the script in the here would just be firing a ray from this point back. So you would be like, okay, if it's me, then that's the one I want. Uh, you wouldn't actually be firing, you wouldn't be firing rays from the collider. The collider doesn't have code to fire rays. You would just say, hey, yeah. we got a list of points, we're going to fire them back from everyone. Well, let me say, if you fired it from the rightmost points there, you might actually shoot through your own collider first. <laughs> What do you mean? Those other rays would shoot through the different colliders that are in the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if there was something here. Yeah, it would hit that and then it would hit that. And, would that, and then that's all how uh, you know that that's an invalid one. Because there's no way for the collider to actually move into it. Um, so, yeah. yeah, as I say, you can uh, you can omit anything that doesn't sh hit your collider at all. Like this one will and this one will. Uh, but these ones Then I'm actually curious, Mark. Yeah. Do we need to do a complicated calculation? Not particularly. Now, for optimization's sake, we might have to eventually. Yeah, I'm saying if you, of all points of collectors on the collider, you start shooting rays, then. Well, and that's what I was saying. Yeah, that's what I was thinking only of one today. The, only one of the wins is the. Yeah. yeah, that's the easiest way to find it. I, I mean, firing six rays might not be the optimal. Let's see. Yeah, there's six. Oh, we could, just, the, we could just start with an easy ex exclusion that is, is it to the right of our... Uh, is it beyond the distance that they were moving? Um, well... The only, already excludes, in this example, you already exclude five out of six. <laughs> the only problem with that is that how do you calculate distance from surface to ray? Because, see, like, now this will hit, but it doesn't hit the, at the same... Time the other stuff hit. So if you just do a distance calculation from this point, you would say, "Oh, well, well, in this case, this one would win, but it's it's possible that it may not win." So actually, if I do this in reversal, it might actually work out that way. 
So, say I do it like this. Uh, nah, I guess this one still would win, right? Yeah. Uh, this yeah. one will still win. Well, there, there, anyway, because of rotation, you're not dealing with a flat surface, so it's not distance from this X value. Well, I'm saying say. our move distance, anything beyond our move distance, those, those coordinates, we don't, don't need to consider. I wouldn't calculate it as distance, though, just because of rotation again. Um, well, I'm just saying... Because um, our move distance is just a single value. It's not even a vector. Right, well, let's put it this way. Um, what if your, your rays know... You know where your shots are raised at, right? How far those go went. We do know how far those went, yeah. Yeah, that's a coordinate. And then beyond that coordinate, it's already excluded. And that already takes care of, like, 75%, 90 percent of the problem. I'm not sure that that would work. Because, like, what are you taking a distance from? From this point, this point, this point, this point. What distance? Because, like, distance from here to here is well, longer, yeah, arbitrarily. Good. You know Maybe what I mean? I'm saying, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in our exclusion code, uh -huh. the simplest exclusion would be whatever growth coordinates we ended up at would have ended up at anything beyond that kick it out that, that takes out yeah but 80% of the is the world already. coordinate down here yeah, that's what I mean how do you do beyond or, that is the question well, angle both okay. direction I anything beyond follow. your move like, well, the simplest price? way you could do this, I think you can just use a dot product and say, yeah. create a vector. Say this this line segment here is a vector. And That's say, you have, well, you I have mean, that yeah. point, you have a normal dot product. That's, yeah. That already takes care and of anything to the right the of majority. that. Anything over here, if the dot product returns a value that's to the right of that, it's invalid. If it turns, returns yeah. a value to the left, it's invalid. And then you'd have to do this one and say anything to the right of this is valid, anything to the left is valid. You yeah. have to do all those checks. Um, but even those two checks alone, that already covers most of the issue. It does. Uh, that's what I was saying. There's ways to optimize it, absolutely. And that's that's one of the things we talked about yesterday. But I was thinking today, like, we, just, to, just to get it running, we don't even need to do that. We just shoot right yeah, backwards, sounds... and then exactly. that solves everything. So. But if we just say in the code that only the ones that were not previously excluded are shooting, then we build towards that. Yeah. Uh, we can, so we can we shoot them. With the... for, for starters, we can make them all shoot, and then we can start thinking of ways to... Um, yeah, or implementing exactly. ways. I mean, we have some thoughts on it. They implement ways Wait, to start. I was just saying, about, in yeah. this example, even the single first exclusion we have already removes most of the... Uh, it would, yeah. It would. Um, you obviously have to do all directions, but yeah. Because you would overlap only this space anyway. Like, you want to give it a little tolerance on the outside, because it's going to anyway, let's be honest. <laughs> Unity's going to put that bubble around it. But that's okay. So see, even if even if you did get these points, or any colliders, like, back here or whatever, you know, it, it doesn't matter, because you're, you're checking all the points eventually anyway. You just filter them out, you know, however. So, it's not like you're taking the entire scene, I mean, you, you could capture the entire scene and check all the points, but that would be ridiculously inefficient. Um, yeah, we're already confirming a collider. Right, yeah. So, yeah, all that said, I mean, it, it sounds like it works. I don't think there's any particular issue with it, you know, at least at the conceptual level. So, I, I think we're... How complicated is the, uh, the dot product thing you're talking about? Uh, we'll have to figure out what the values are. And then have to do some testing to see, like, you know, if we have a line segment, how does that react to other things? Because you're, you're checking vectors, which could be points or lines, so it, it gets a little complicated. But it's it, it returns a single value, and if it's zero, I think it's it's perpendicular with it or something. Or it's like, it's on the line, but then it, like, radiates out. So, like... This is probably like 0.3, this is 0.5, it's something like that. And then so you'll know that if it's positive, like it's that, and then if it's like negative 0.3, then you know it's on the left side, or it's one side or the other, then you just make the distinction of what side do you want it to be on, something like that. So, 
That's uh. Yeah. <laughs> She's attacking me. Don't stop. Feeling them up. <laughs> Men love that. Yeah. Oh yeah. They love that. It's, it's like the Twitter told me. Men barbecue touch PP and lie. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's lies and slander. <laughs> lies and slander. It's over. The show's over. It didn't <laughs> say. <laughs> Scrub us. Math, math, math. My name's Mark. Math, math, math. Yeah. Shut up. We're, we're trying. We're trying to make a platforming game. And I'm fun. trying to make a man out of you. No. <laughs> no. You. no. 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 <laughs> Harassment. Oh Harassment. God, that was... No, we're making a man out of you. Mm-hmm. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Harassment. Doing you a favor. No. No consent. No consent. Making a man out of you. Bad touch. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so anyway, so, um, yeah, it seems... It is seems... this gonna be court evidence? Yeah, it's court evidence. I don't know, ask Infiltration. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I shouldn't bring drama up. <laughs> yeah, do you know who Infiltration is? Yes, Mark. Yeah, okay. Alright. I'll All read right. the chat, they've been talking to you for oh. like an hour. Well, they haven't. All these oh, people. Reported. Reported. <laughs> <laughs> Just Larry. Yeah, I was gonna say that one. That one's new. Hi, Larry. I'm keeping an eye on it. Hey, hey. Um, so yeah, I don't see any real failure here. I mean, it's not, may not be optimized, but I don't see any well, place in which this really falls apart. I mean, there's nuance with having to worry about, you know, segments and, and the width and stuff, but at basic face value, I don't see anything wrong with it. Mark? Yes. Scrub out. Scrub out, yeah. No, we're not done yet. <laughs> we're just beginning. We've got, let's see. I can't say that every style. Oh, we're about a third way to play this. Hopefully it's mm-hmm. not randomizing. No, it's not. Okay, we're good. <laughs> That's how I checked my time. Look how far down the playlist is. Because, I don't know, we started late because everything crashed. And all that, so I don't even know what time we even really started. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, that's, that's the basic idea. And now we're trying to at least implement the basic stuff. So what we've been doing is kind of writing notes in the, um... And... That should still be legible. Yeah, that should be okay. Um, we've been writing notes and writing regions and stuff. So like, you know, wall check goal. Ultimate goal is to adjust the move distance, of course, so that we don't enter any wall space. Writing notes like, you know, what data do we have? What order do we have to do stuff in? Uh, and then we're kind of like writing notes and filling in code as we go through. So it, it's still pretty bare bones, but we're uh, we're making it work. So at this point, the overall idea is so we do our we determine our what index we're walking to. So what I mean by that the overall is, idea is boxcast sucks. We're not sponsored by boxcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Um, so every collider's got these points, and when you're on a line, I can show that. When you're on a line, um, you'll notice that it shows here. You're on this line, and you're moving from here to here, or you're moving from here to here, and that's what we mean by index. So an index is the number of like an array. So we've got an array of points, a collection of points, and so this is point zero, point one, two, and three, I believe. So I believe it goes clockwise. Maybe it's kind of clockwise. I got it written down. Somewhere. So, do we have, um... So you're either walking from, like, 0 to 1, or from 1 to 0. That's what I mean. Do we have the, the polygon lying around? To uh, show it? Oh, you mean, uh, like this one here? Yeah. 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 So, so you can see the deep change through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this one's a lot more complicated. It's just a, a shape. I winged the shape. Just so we can see what it looks like. Um, and then, you know, you want to remain always on the outside collider. So these are just a bunch of triangles overlap, so you only see the one that we're standing on as, as this. Biggie's real shape is a triangle. Yeah, Biggie. <laughs> we call it Biggie. Because <laughs> you see, he's big. He's a Biggie. He's really big. Mm. So that that's what this first part does here. Um, you determine the, the, yeah. the direction you're walking along that construction, and or collider, or whatever you want to call it. Then you detect uh, line dens, make sure you don't go past a line in. 
And then you actually try to like cast a walking ray, we call it, and that casts along the ground. That's this one down here. And if it happens to find like a, a ramp, it'll be like, oh cool, okay, we're gonna stop here, and then in the next step of the update, we're gonna start moving up this way. But we don't want to overshoot that. That's what this does currently, and it reports back that. Now there's no like tolerance for the width, like we were saying that you have to take into consideration this length here, and then do like a little more to see what's out there. It doesn't do that yet, so that's something we do have to add. And uh, and we don't have a ceiling ray or a head ray. No, we do not have this. This doesn't even exist right now. It will become important though, so we will have to add that. And so those two probably have to be cast independently and then you just take the triple ones. You take the data from them and then use that for later, but you don't want to actually move the dude yet. Because you got to do your wall check and that's where all the wall check code's going to be in here. And then you actually do the walk once you figure out what's the maximum distance that you're supposed to walk. And so that will be here and your end will be here. So your move distance is this here. So from here to here, that's your move distance, if you do it correctly. It's all about shrinking this number. So you're walking this far normally. It's all about shrinking it down, saying, okay, we shrunk it down to here, and now we shrunk it down to here, and there's nothing else in the way. Cool, so that's our walk distance. Let's go! Hey! Diva 302 followed, thank you. So that I mean that's the idea. We just gotta make it work now. I mean there's 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 gonna be edge cases and shit to handle, but I mean that's the basic thing that we have to worry about. Um, and then yeah, so then you do actually do the walk once you figure out your thing, and then if you need to transition to the next collider, then you do so. Now I've already put in stuff here to check to see if the raycast move distance actually ends up being larger than the move distance, meaning we've we've shrunk it down by now then you do not want to do this. Because, yeah, sure, okay, we found, we shot the ray and we found this. Cool, all right, we want to transition to this, right? But we ended up only going this far. So that negates the transition because you haven't gotten that far yet. So you do have to check that. So I've already got that part in there. We, we don't reach it <laughs> like we thought we did, but we don't want to do this transition. So there's all that stuff. And then this just manages the last collider, so I don't have to check that again. And then there's some of the patient stuff, but that's outside of the scope of what we're doing. I, I mean, that's pretty much it. So, I mean, that that's that's the the thousand foot view of it, so to speak. That's the the, the basic idea, the master plan. So now it's just we promised getting... the uh, TED talk will be longer. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> my name's Mark, and this is Tim. <laughs> so yeah, only nerds who TED talk. That's what it is. Yeah, sound like a complete nerd. Uh, so yeah, so the parts we need to do now, we need a ceiling ray to happen. We need to search farther than how we want, so that we may detect, but not act on a new, a new potential uh, floor that may happen after we move another time. So we may not even you're reach saying this, but we we need the, the distance. What's that? You're saying that distance was based on the diagonal of your collider. Yeah, so that's Better. the maximum amount that you need to correct for given rotation so so say say our collider was you know angled this way like we had in that other example um you you can't use this distance this distance doesn't work or this distance doesn't work that's not right that's not a proper extension because you know your your proper extension is actually this like it's not this it's not that it's kind of like this, because this is your outward point. But overshooting is safe. There's no there's no bad point about overshooting it. So let's just take the maximum value it could ever be, which is the maximum you know, width in any direction of our collider. 
and then just tack that onto it. Did we overshoot it? Big whoop. We found this, okay. So we found that, and then we bump into this, and we say, well, this is this is not walkable, so we're not going to do it. You could, you could give it a thousand meters, and it would still just bump into this and stop. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? You, you could, you could, say you could walk up all this, okay. So you could, you could start omitting extra shit, but, like, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? It, it, it's safe to overshoot it, you just don't want to undershoot yeah. it. So I'm just saying, uh, I was just saying, wherever we shoot toward, from that point onwards, take the normal and dot product that as exclusion. Um, you could do that. Yeah, so say, yeah, say you do say, okay, well, this line is obviously walkable, so anything like past us. that point is invalid. Yeah, you could do that. Because, yeah. um, as we were saying, we don't exactly know where where we end up and how big our shape is, so... I mean, what what, it, what it's really doing is saying that these points are invalid anyway, because you're going to get the yeah. line of this, and you're going to store the points and say these are invalid, because, yeah, okay... This could potentially be a thing. I mean, in this example, it's not really the prominent one. But it could mm -hmm. potentially be something uh, that you could run into. But you you want to make sure that these points are omitted. So when you get the line, you know, of oh, this is point A, this is point B. And we're not going to fire those ones off of it. So, I mean, it is that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, just for the exclusion, the farthest point is where it we definitely know anything beyond that needs to be exclusive. Yeah. I mean, if all we're doing is fire and raise back in our inefficient model, then yeah, we don't need that. But it could help later, sure. Yeah, you, you could definitely say, well, anything past this line, to the right of this line is, is you know, mm -hmm. there's your bumpkiss, you don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah. But only they, because we don't exactly know where we ended up. Yeah, because, like, say say if you moved a little farther and you did reach this, then your total distance on the right side could be this. And so you do want to make sure that these things don't activate and you can do that. I mean, if you don't even reach that far, then it gets cut off at this point anyway, so whatever. Uh, I'm sure there's maybe even easier ways to calculate that. But, yeah, for for what it's worth, we've got plenty of data to use to potentially optimize and and say these points are invalid out here so I, I'm not worried so much about that mm -hmm. just as long as it's an accurate omission and that so way so I don't, like I said if you if you like box cast or overlay cast even outside and you do get these things they'll eventually just be truncated out once you start saying well only the inside of these four lines is valid or you know whatever it happens to be so there, there's a lot of ways to help this work. There's a lot of information we have to use. A lot more than I thought actually we would end up with, to be honest. So, so uh, where do we start? Making the, the raise in Aquarius, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I was saying you gotta, you gotta shoot more rays too. You gotta shoot from the top. Actually, this one and this one ends up being the head right here. And then you have other stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I don't know, I guess the head ray might be a good place to start, because it's basically the same thing as a walk ray. Um, just the uh, the ceiling the ray, you mean? Yeah, ceiling ray, or head ray, I don't know, I, I call it head ray sometimes. But yeah, you could say this is the floor ray and the ceiling ray. So yeah. its primary purpose is to detect a floor or a ceiling. So, you know, obviously it'll detect this, but that's a ceiling. Stuff like that, so... I'm kind of curious, um, with this setup, if you try to do something like grab a ceiling, would that be done through the ceiling, right? Yeah. Or the color of the bronze? I've, I've theorized that, so say if you jump into a ceiling, um, you jump in up here, and since it, it hits the center point, the head point, ceiling point, whatever, uh, your collider is going to attach to it sort of like this. And... If you're moving right now, then you're going to be essentially walking down the ceiling, potentially. Yeah. Um, Until your directionality is downward. Yeah, so if you're falling faster than that, sure, you'll detach from it and come down. But if, say, mm -hmm. gravity stops for whatever reason, or gravity is slowed down, or it's the apex of your jump, 
and and your gravity is not lower than the angle of the ceiling, so you're going, okay. you'd be going this way, then you'll actually be walking down the ceiling. Um, but I think the major difference here is that if that is the case, and that's what happens, um, you, you never actually want to attach yourself to the ceiling. You would attach yourself to the ceiling only to walk, but then by the time the update ends, you would detach yourself automatically. I'm saying if you actually had some sort of wrap system like in Donkey Kong Country. Oh yeah, you could do that. Yeah, yeah. you could do that. Yeah. Um, but that made me think of something else. If that's the case, uh, you remember... Was that the Ninja Gaiden? Where you could walk on the, climb yes, the walls? you could climb the walls. Somewhere. Do we then need an extra ray on the exact center of the sides? No, I don't believe so. Um, or wall climbing, why not? Because we can, we can already tell. We can just set a flag that, oh, uh, if we did find a wall, then yeah, we're touching the wall, and and that's pretty much all we need to know mm. at that point. But if we actually need a line ref on a wall, I don't think you do because you're just you're con constantly rechecking the wall whenever you try to walk. I mean, you would never go into it. I mean, it. think think about the the kind of games where you can climb it, like you're actually just going up and down it. Yeah, you you still know how far away you are from the wall. That will never change, and you just set a flag that says I'm touching wall. And so, yeah, but if we actually yeah. need to need to move across the line of the wall, it would be the same thing as if you were jumping or falling next to the wall. It's the same same math there. You're just not allowed to enter the wall, and you could say that my falling speed. Uh, gets minimized. So let's say like Mega Man X when he's sliding down the wall, like he's not attached to the wall. It's just that when X, when X's collision box is touching the wall, his falling speed just turns to like you know three pixels or whatever. Or yeah, but what in the case of say, say in the case of Ninja Gaiden, you climb the wall. Or... In in that case, then your fall speed gets set to zero, and the controls now say if you're touching the wall and holding up. Uh, then you will move upward. Yeah, but that and those controls need to need to move upward with the direction of the wall's rotation. Yeah, you know what the direction is. Cause but that needs to be, you need to make a line ref then in their system. Uh, in data wise, yeah, you'd have to collect the yeah. So if like the line is is the wall is like this or like this, and yeah, that would also would work that. with a center point system. Yeah, but, but I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think you need a center point on the wall. You just need to know what the what the thing is. <laughs> you need to know what the angle is because when you move up and down, you move up at you know your velocity times the direction from this thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess what would be angle? Does that change an angle? I don't know. If that Sizing. I'm saying at some point you're line ripping across it. Yeah. Let's say it's D for direction. So the direction is this and this in reverse. So you would just do velocity times direction. And then you would, your character here would move in this direction. And, you know, go Or do we just, do we just give it a line ref based on whatever roll point was detected by the box cost? Give it a line ref based on based on whatever rule points you can take about a race. Actually, sorry, I'm talking about a race. <sighs> I don't know. I don't have a full answer for you. I don't think we will need all of that. Mm -hmm. As long as we have like a wall reference, we should be okay. Because to me, logically speaking, if we're actually ascending a wall, like we're walking, we need to treat it uh, as a center point system. Not necessarily, because whatever orientation we're at, so say this is our dude, and we're walking up a wall, or we, we hit a wall that's like this, and say we can grab that and go go ahead. Um, actually, would it be that? Would he actually hit the edge then? Or would it center and how would we grab that wall? Well, we, we can easily say that because we're touching the wall, we stop gravity, so you're not moving down anymore. And then this is your orientation towards that. So your your direction from here, the direction of the line, plus the velocity that you say is your climb speed. That's it. Like you just times the velocity times the direction, and your orientation will stay the same. You'll just move up here. 
your orientation relative to this doesn't change. Yeah, Mr. Crow, if you always won the top right of the box there. I don't know. That's a good yeah. question. Okay. Should, if we detect a wall, should we be able to... Well, see, now ceilings and walls are different too, so it gets a little complicated, I guess. We don't... Yeah, because there's it... a difference between rotating to walk up a wall and between actually being in a wall club state. Yeah, so if this is your head point and here, like, you want the wall to be flush with this. But the ceiling can be like this. So at some point, you're going to transition from this to this. It, I don't know. It that might, might only, work. It, it oh, no, might yeah, you, you could still go up this way. Walls. Yeah, you could, you could go up that way because, say, this is the wall here. So you so would if go you do a wall here, climb system, head it, may not even, it may not even work unless the angle is completely straight. It'll still work, but it may look weird. Or we do a uh, rotation on the glider. You could do that, or you could simply apply rotation to only the graphic. Because mm -hmm. you know you know where this line is, and you could say that, okay, so X, he's normally holding the wall like this, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, get Will's arm out. And so that's flush with this, but say if the wall is this instead, and I'll just draw that underneath, so yeah, so this is the flush one. Then we could angle X's graphics so that he's like this instead. You know what I mean? There are ways. Yeah. So, like the the collider would look, you know, like this or something. But you know, it's. I'm sorry. Uh, it would be like that. It'd be more like this. It is the center points here. That's where the ceiling is. Um, so X would be aligned like that. You know, instead, or I guess if it was not quite, it's probably a better example. It'd be like it's slightly back like this. So when we would say that this is the collider, right? And you would say that X is slightly back here. So this is his graphic. Uh, it's slightly back, even though there's like a little gap here, but you just kind of angle him back a little bit. Yeah, we, we, we don't have to look through him for doing pixels, though. Well, no, I'm talking about like an infinite, you know, hand-drawn, 3D-enabled, whatever. Yeah. In, in a retro game, you wouldn't even have that kind of nuance to it anyway. Yeah, sure. But it is a concern, sure. yeah, in, in that, you know, if there is, is... Is it going to end up like this? I mean, I guess so. I don't know how else you would do it, because you can't allow this to intrude into the wall. Because mm. that would be mean that it sees it as a floor. At what angle would you cut that off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Now you, you could potentially rotate the collider, but I think that would cause more problems than it might solve. Well, as long as the, uh, the pencil, how well it matches with the, uh, mm. with the graphic, I suppose. Yeah. And, and again, like, you don't see Mega Man X do this, and that might be possibly why. It just doesn't look quite right, so we just make sure our levels don't have that. Or if they're off by a certain measure that they just, he can't, maybe you can't walk climb on this kind of slope. Yeah. Only on something much more straight. So... There's, there's, there's ways to do it, I think. There's ways to do it. Um, or like in Chante, the new one, it, certain parts she'll slide down instead of um, instead of walk down because she gets too steep. Mm -hmm. So you could say that that the uh, you know her legs are like up here. And she's like, oh no, I'm falling and stuff, and it looks you know like this. This is a very poor Shante drawing, but you know, uh, that looks like that looks no, like Josuke's. Hair. Yeah, it looks like Josuke's hair. Um, so the graphic is like this, and she's like, ah, you know, but it's it's angled, so it looks like it's on there, but it's you know, you're actually a little bit off. So the pose is intentionally bigger to cover a wider base of connection, and then she's always faced one way. 
you know, the she's always faced this way, away from the thing. Like, there's, there's little tricks you can do. Mm-hmm. There's little things. Just give her 15 hit buckers. Give her what? Give her 15 hit buckers. 15? <laughs> Drawing stream. Yeah, really. That's a shitty scrub scribble. Scrub scribble. That's what I should call subscribing. Uh, scrub scribble. Some scrub scribble to the game dev scrubs. There you go. <laughs> Larry, on a scale from uh, 110, go. what's the score? Oh boy, it's Ashante. Oh boy. This is terrible. Wow, that's an awful fucking head. I mean, that one's Larry's version artist. Yeah. You should grade you. Yeah, there you go. What's, what's my score? There you go. 1 to 10. There you go. So this is the bandana version. So she's got the bandana. Oh, this is the pirate stairs version. And there's probably a hair lock here, and then a pointy elf here, and then some hair. And this is the big hair. Oh, that one. That's... <laughs> it's so fucked up. Uh, yeah, there's hair over here too, right? Yeah, so there you go. And then There's uh, hair everywhere. Yeah, there's hair everywhere. And this is the bandana. You have a little wrinkle in there. And then, uh, yeah, good enough. <laughs> I, I can't draw with the mouse. Hell, fuck, I can't draw anyway, but I can draw worse with the mouse than I can otherwise. Um, so yeah, once you hit the ceiling, though, that you, um, because the ceiling is just a four in reverse, uh, the same kind of thing happens. So one of the, the reasons we do the center point system, or want to do the center point system, is so when you're walking on something, it's this. And therefore, you know, Mega Man's feet are evenly distributed visually here. And so, I don't know. Yeah, here we go. There's X. Something like that. And then there's X. Um, so his feet are evenly distributed. Otherwise, you would get something where the collision box is like this, and then I'm just gonna draw a stick figure here. But you get the idea that like X is like off the fucking uh, yeah, something like this. <laughs> X is off the fucking floor. Like what? Like he's not even standing on the floor. So like that looks completely stupid. So you wanna you wanna center it with the center point on the bottom. But uh, ceilings are the same way. You don't have to do ceilings that way, but it makes sense to do it that way because it's just the um, it's just the floor code in reverse, and it'll look a little more consistent. So X's head is here. Is this floor code will never place as everything gets. Yeah, so he's like, "Yay, I'm, I'm jumping." Um, the thing really different is the uh, the attachment system. Detaching system. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't attach to... You would only attach to it during the update to walk it, but then you would immediately detach it so that you're still falling at the end of the update. Like, is really how that yeah, works. The only way going up, basically. Right, right. And you would also only attach to it if your velocity is the same. Alright, hold on. It would be the same... So if your velocity is the same as the floor angle, or lower, or, well, higher, like it would be into it, then you want to walk through it. But if it's lower than that, if you're going down farther, then you're not attached to it because you're going to go from here to here and you're going to be off the, you know, you're going to be off the ceiling at that point. But if, if your velocity is telling you to go this way, then you want to walk down. You want to redirect that velocity down the line and then walk that distance. Essentially walking with your head <laughs> down there. And then at the end it will, you know, it'll decouple it. So you're free at that point. And then the next, maybe your velocity is the next frame, this one. And then it's not your fault. That's how it works. That's the idea. We'll see how it works. I, I believe that's how Super Mario, New Super Mario Brothers, we did it. So we'll see. I mean, there could be some velocity degradation, um, or you can force the next frame 
has a higher gravity than the previous frame to get them off the floor or off the ceiling. But yeah, I mean, because like Mario bumps his head, you know what I mean. And, and so he's got a, a maybe one or two frames where he might be ceiling walking, so to speak. But then after that, he's obviously gained enough momentum to fall down away from it. We also don't want to stop him on a dime either. So if, if your head is touching this point, you don't want to just completely stop all left and right movement. It will feel weird and you'll see a stutter and it's strange. And some platformers do that. And it feels weird and it looks like a stutter. So, Castlevania is actually a good example. Uh, especially Castlevania 4, if you jump into a ceiling, like Simon's head gets stuck in the ceiling and he stops moving left or right, and it's really fucking weird. And then once he falls down low enough that his head's clear, then he continues the move. It's, it's strange. And I don't want something like that to happen in any of our games. So, hopefully all that made sense, I guess. Just postulating different stuff. So, I don't know. Do we want to try to the, the ceiling ray first? Just see if yeah, we can get sure. that working? Okay. I mean, I was just thinking there's too much drawing, too little uh, coding, too, too little math. What's that? There's too little math going on. Oh, I mean, too little. Too much art. Too much art. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we, we're going to have the ceiling ray in both cases because if you're jumping. You have to detect the ceiling, and also if you're walking, you also have to detect the ceiling, so you don't bump your head into something or get stuck in something. Um, so let's theorize where where does this have to go? So we're gonna have we're gonna have to segment this up. So we're gonna have to do the walk and the ceiling at the same time, uh, or one after another, and we'll cache the results of that. We'll look at them and say, okay, the walk ray went farther than the ceiling ray. So we're going to take the, the ceiling rays closer maximum distance. And then minus the width of the collider. And then that'll give us our mo more up-to-date center point between the two. And then we can do all the wall detection code after that. But we have to find out who hit what closest. So in this case, this one hit at all, and so we, we got that. Got circle stuff there. So this one hit at all, and this one didn't even hit. So we need to analyze that. Did this one even hit? If they if it didn't hit, you know, look at the other one. This one hit. If they both hit, who who hit first? So there's something here. Well, then the four one hit first, or with the least amount of distance. So we take that one. Cool. If that didn't happen, then we have to take this one. And that will become the new basis for our new move, uh, move distance. We base everything else off that. But that makes sense, right? That would be step one, I think. You do them both and say, okay, who, who hit? Did anybody hit anything? And, and we take the one with the least amount of distance, and that's now the value that we go forward with. Now there's other information we can glean from these things, but I think that that's the bare minimum. Do you agree that that sounds right? Bare minimum? That's the bare minimum, yeah. That, I, would, I would say that would be our starting point. So here where we have move distance, we're just gonna, we're gonna do a walk ray and a ceiling ray, and we're gonna say, alright, who hit, who hit what? And then we'll, we'll set move distance to the lesser of the two. I think that makes sense. Do you agree? Sure. Sure. <laughs> He's yeah, just sitting there in silence. Yeah, I was just saying, like, you there? <laughs> so, region. Uh, Cast ceiling ray. Did I spell it right this time? I keep trying to spell ceiling, but I spell CL instead. Yes, <laughs> you spelled it right. <laughs> I keep spelling the word CL. That's um, I think in in French it's cloud, right? But it's the name of that Mega Man Zero character, the girl. Mm -hmm. Sky. Oh, it's Sky. Okay. 
And so I kept I kept typing it CL ing. <laughs> CL ing. Alright, whatever, fuck me. Um, so let's take a look. I'm not gonna copy paste it, but we'll just. Because uh, some of this may not be applicable to the, to the head one. So we do want a ray uh, from the position to in the walk direction at the move distance. So. Well. Let's see. Goal. Fire array at the top middle of the collide of our collider. Catch any ceilings. Okay, so raycast hit 2D. Uh, an array of that ceiling. Hits. Balls. Uh, the uh, the reason I spaced out for moments mm -hmm. was because um, the admin of RPM figured out how to make it work uh, without the model screen. Oh, how, how does that work? Don't know. I had to tag them on Discord. Huh. That's cool. That Vixie, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, see what they say. Uh, we're talking so about uh, Mega Man X Dive, the uh, the mobile game. Because my phone isn't liking it too much either. It's like getting warm and whatnot. Those touching. Oh, controls. absolutely. Yeah, it's not it's not a light game. That's for sure. Right, our origin will be transform that position. Um. Oh, we got the add? Yeah, alright, let's do this. I'm gonna make an actual value for this. So, vector2 uh, top center point is going to equal the position plus um, our rotation. Or no, is yeah, we do. Shouldn't we uh, just, I don't know, get these points that we want to cost from before we even do the costing code? Uh, you could do that, but then you are doing math that potentially may go unused depending on what you're doing. Well, I was just thinking of when you kind of need to do this, what, six times? Well, no, you would just reuse this from this point on. You would make it at the the, the first point that you need it, you make it, and then you just reuse it below that. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, because we're going to use make six other points, like, we might as well just stack them all at once or something. Well, yeah, you, 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 could, you could do them ahead of time. Because they follow the same code structure. Yeah, you could do them ahead of time, but it's... Like... How do I want to say? Um, hmm. Like, if you don't actually use that, I mean, it's, it's calculations that were done for no reason. Like, it's an optimization mm -hmm. issue, potentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can, we can optimize it later, whatever, but, you know, I mean, it works. We'll get it. We'll, we'll get it working, <laughs> and then when it works, then we can refine it and optimize it. Nah, I'm just saying is in bulk when we just write six points and then uh, six rays and then go. You could, yeah. I just and my brain is working under the assumption that we may not need all these calculations, so we'll only mm -hmm. do the calculations as we need them. And if we can reuse it later, that's great. And if not, then whatever. I see. Mm -hmm. Um, so transform that up, and then we need the we need the height of our collider. Uh, we can't rely on bounds because that's orientated in world orientation with no rotation. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think what would be the quickest way to actually calculate this. Because up here, uh, you, you need knows it. Yeah, but it's it knows it in in world or. Er, Local points. So, well, that is one way to do it. So, yeah, you could you could say that um, collider box. Uh, or is it our collider? What I call it? Our collision box. Clearly, what you need to do, you just always attach like a, a line uh, a line collider there, and then uh, ray cost it, and you always know. Let's see, Wasi scale? Yeah. 
So you I'm can, joking. yeah, you can do transform that up times the size dot y. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. I guess you would do, yeah, you would just do times the size. All right. So this. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We gotta, we gotta segment this. So float height equals transform up dot size dot y. Uh, or, or no, you know what? There and then dot y. So yeah, that's it. That's it. So you do the you do the vector math, and then you just take the y component of it, and that's your height. And then so you can say that plus. Um, New vector two, or you know what? Not that many. Vector two size equals. What's that. the current variable for the uh, the bumps and the points? What's that? What's the current ray variable name um, for the bumps and the points? I didn't do it yet. I didn't do it yet. Uh, yeah, so you can do this. Hey. Just to make it happy, you can do a vector three. But yeah, so here you go. You can do the size, and then you don't want the x, you just want the y. And so this is from the center point, which is the bottom. So here, it's down here. So you need the full height in order to add up to get up here. Uh, see, our. Collision box size. I might as well just put this up at top. Probably gonna have to use it anyway. Uh, so we have. Yeah, so our quarter points are going to be size too. So that works. I mean, well, what is the bottom one called? That you actually give it a name like bottom center point? That's just center point. Because that, that's actually physically where we're centered on in Unity. Like that's literally it. That that's our absolute actual. Oh, no, just compiler. So. But it's aligned to the bottom. Yeah, it is. But our our object point resolves to this. So that is literally our center in, in the entire world, as far as Unity mm. is concerned. So that okay. is our center point. I, I I feel that that's a valid distinction because this is where Unity says we exist. And then everything else out of that is embellished from this point. So this is our origin, our center. Uh, yeah. And then so this is our top center point, I guess, because it's it's not our center point. It's some modified version of that. Uh, but in this case, I think I just called it. Uh, I did call it top center point. So yeah. whatever. Anyway, so we do. Yeah, just wondering. That's our origin, and then our direction is walk direction because we're firing. The ray always in the same direction that we fired the ground one every time. We're not shooting straight, we're shooting in the same direction as the ground. So if it goes up, the other one also has to go up. Mm -hmm. And then the distance um, will be the original move distance. I'm just kind of saying to declare the other points now because now you have the, the reference here. Well, like we the other points will follow we'll from the location of the top center points. Well, if we need to declare them, we'll declare them. Hmm. If we don't need to declare them, then we don't need to declare them. I mean, you could argue that they should be up here. Sure. Because falling code is probably the jumping in falling might use it. But you're going to reuse this. Oh, actually, hold on. Uh, uh, where is. Oh, that's right, because I need size to do it. But there's no reason to calculate every point right now. I mean, we actually already have them, too. We do have all the four points here. This just the center point is not a collider point. Mm, you so, have the other four coordinates already. Yeah, so we do have the four coordinates already, because I needed them elsewhere. Okay. Um, but our center point is just, well, transform that position. Although I believe I have a... Yeah, big position at beginning of update. In case we have to move the character, and so we'll have a reference to where it was originally, and then this is the top center point, mm -hmm. which you could argue that this probably should be this, but just for English sake, you can say position at beginning plus that. 
Uh, wait, hold on. Hold on. This is this is shitty code. This is not right. <laughs> no, this is not right. Not right. I think. Yeah, this ain't right. This ain't right. Um, we do not want this. Because this is... Because, yeah, we're making the mistake, or I'm making the mistake of designate. Oh, yeah, Y means up, right? Yeah, but we've transformed it by transformed that up. So Y is meaningless now. That is not correct. That is no, no bueno. Um, so what I'm going to do is... Hey, okay. Hmm? You want the collision box size there is correct though? That needs to be why. Because it goes by our... Well, the, the size that y or x is fine. But because you're transforming yeah. it into a direction in order to add it to this, now there's a problem. It uh, needs to just be res respective of uh, rotation. The rotated version. Can we... Hmm. Doesn't like this. Transform up times. Hi, uh, Mark. A little bit of a question here. Sure. Is your win amp readout correct? Should be. Yeah. It's, it's been saying characters like three for one now. Oh really? Oh, did it crash? Yep, um, it crashed. I'm... Oh, you're right. Okay, I'm sorry. You're right. It crashed. Boot it again. Is that better? Yeah, it's Jacob. Mm -hmm. right? Um, there we go. Yeah, let's see. So our quarter box size. Yeah, that ends. So transform up. Well, oh, actually, this should be transform that right that x. So this will be the width. Oh yeah, and this needs to be no. This is what we need to add to it. This needs to be height and so hold on. How does this transform that right is should be vector three, right? Yeah. Transform up. Times the Y should give you increased magnitude in that direction, right? Operator cannot be or it's the uh, the point exactly to the middle of. Uh, oh, it's okay with two quarter points. I think what I have to do is times these first, and then. Oh. I'm curious though. Can't you just say it's the top two points and why. then the point exactly in the middle of it? He maybe. Okay, my my thing was is I was trying to multiply this against this, but it was a vector 3 mm -hmm. already, so this has to be dot x. Um, uh, I'm just thinking you're, you're calculating it based on the center points, but you can also calculate it from the corners. Right. Uh, you could you could potentially get the distance between them. I mean, it might be more math to do that, so I'm afraid of. Mm. Um, I mean, the, the halfway point between them. So what you would do here to get the top center point is you would add this because this gives it a vector of the magnitude of the size times the WASI scale because these are these are local space the so x and y are local and then you have to transform them by the scale and so position was this vector two I don't like this on the three uh, that's my make this a vector two. So, um, yeah, in fact, this, this could be a vector 3, fine. If I want to make it a vector 3, it don't matter. Fuck it. Okay. That's fine. Uh, then, yeah, then it wants this to be a vector 3. That's okay. I don't mind that. Because uh, it is a world point. Um, so this is in the right direction. So, uh, yeah, let's do it down here. So if your collider is like this then your position is here, and then you want... Right doesn't mean this. 
Sprite means this. Sprite means that. So in order to get the right point here, or let's say with the top, we'll just say the top. So transform to up is this, right? It's going that direction. And it has a magnitude of one. So you wanna do the one times the height, whatever it happens to be, will give you a vector that goes in this direction and a magnitude of this. So this plus this vector equals this up here. Mm -hmm. If you don't take into account your transform dot up, then you're going to end up with this point here. You can't just plus y because that will give you a wrong point if you're if you're not or if you're rotated. So you have to take your orientation. That's why you did transform up, the up times the the local y, and that makes it this big. And so that's your point. So this plus this vector gives you this. And the same thing can be said for the the width. So actually, in this case, you don't need the width one right now. So I'm going to get rid of it. Um, that would have not given us any useful information, but in that format at least. Anyway. And in this case, now we're going to reduce this. So I'm going to just do this. Close that. And yeah, okay. And then we don't need this. Doesn't really tell us much on its own. It really only in conjunction with this is it useful. So that's the same math, it just condensed into one line now. So that's our top center point, and we'll have that always to check against. So that should be okay. Uh, so we got our top center point, our walk direction, and our move distance. And so the next thing that we did here, oh, we, sh we showed the ray and debug. That's important. Uh, so let's do the same thing here. Uh, let's see, that, that tends future step. Yeah, future step, yeah. And we'll do the same color, because they're going to be on top and bottom. Um, and actually, you know what? Let's, let's just run this and see, make sure that the math is right from the top of the head. Before we get any farther into it, it should be firing out the top. Well, depot points. And it does follow our directionality. So. Can you zoom in on that and slow down? Time freeze. With the next, looks like all the, all the deep stuff is in there. Are we seeing resistance? Well, it's not reacting to anything, but it's just showing the debug of where the ray was fired. Yeah. And then, so you can see the micro step is working. Hmm. Um, I'm thinking we step should, one should this way. probably step render the corner rays in like an orange shade. We and could do more. That less opaque so it doesn't confuse too much yeah I, I think just because these two have the same purpose that I would make them the same uh, color but yeah, yeah the exactly. corner rays should be different you're right I agree with that corner rays should be different when we get to that point. like a little less opaque and uh, maybe you know orange yeah would probably work well so again the rays we use anywhere else the rays not doing anything which is why we can walk into this still uh, it's just yeah. visually showing, just so the audience understands. We just want to mm -hmm. make sure that, oh yeah, that looks like the right point in space. Um, That's a good place, though, to test it once it does work, if it stops on the... Uh, hmm. Yeah, it will be. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, so we started the update here, and we moved to here. And that's where we ended up, and that looks right. So we started um, updating here and moved to here. Okay. Because we're, we're showing the current position, and the ray is showing yeah. the former position to the current position. 
That's we just need I... the blue circle in there. Yeah, 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 we can do that. Yeah, that's why you see that in there. Right? He's missing. <laughs> in action. Yeah, we can put the point on that. I think that's, that's a reasonably... Reasonable idea. Um, so... Gotta be consistent. Let's... Um, debug. And... Frog is those. We'll put it at the bottom. Yeah, in fact, this is the point itself, so, um... So we'll just do this. This is the debug stuff, I'm not worried so much about the optimization here. So we'll just do this as is. Top center point. And we'll use the same math as the other. And that should be it. This should show it. Looks like it does. Uh, it doesn't look about a circle. Why not? What did I do? Oh, I did draw axis. Right, so where? Oh, draw wire spheres right above it. Do it. Okay. So I want to, again, use the top center point. And. I didn't notice the difference because. Uh, I was thinking, oh, there's only two instructions here because the color is already set. But I forgot this is a second instruct or a third instruction I had to add anyway, so it needs to be three. So I saw two there, and I'm like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that works because I don't need the color, right? Yeah, no, that wasn't quite the case, but get the idea. Uh, but yeah, there it is. So it's on the it's on top of the head now. And so again, it doesn't function yet, but at least we can see it and verify that. Yeah, okay, that's right. That's the right position. Okay, so that works. Now we need to make it actually do something. Um, let's see. Yeah, cast ceiling ray. So now we need to actually react to that. So four. Int I or ceiling ray ID equals zero. Oh, not ceiling, <laughs> ceiling, ceiling ray ID is less than. You spell it with a Y. Yeah, yeah, something. Dot length and ceiling ray ID. So we'll cycle through all these, and so if, um, we'll take a look at our omissions here. Uh, what did we do? Oh, here is the loop. So we only want to look for ones that are different than us, but also the floor breath. And we want to, yeah, let's, let's add all those omissions in. We'll copy that part in. So it don't have to be. Yeah, I'm gonna change this from results to something else. So this will be four ray ID, and this will be four ray hit results, or four four ray hits. That way, if I see the code down here, when I copy-paste something, which you should never do because then you make mistakes like I do all the time, uh, then now I can clearly see ceiling hits, ceiling ray ID, instead of results and whatever result ID. Doesn't mean much. A bit more explicit. So, okay, that looks okay. Ceiling hits. Yeah, okay. Well, admit all those. And what do we got here? We Okay, so we know we bumped into something. 
Oh, we gotta store the results and shit too. Potentially. Alright, for now I'm just gonna do the move distance. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna copy this, but we're gonna like shave off most of this. So we're not gonna we're not gonna store anything here. Not yet. We'll add that later, but right now we don't really need it. What we need to do is make sure that the move distance gets updated, which actually needs to be a different one. So we need float ceiling move distance. Uh, which actually should be this, and then we can use this value of that's for it. So. And that means we also need to change this up here to walk length distance. So, because we do need to intelligently select after this point the um, which one we're going to use. We're not just going to blindly use it. So, distance reference. This one. Is that the only one? No, we got more. Okay, and then the adjusted ray move distance is the. Ray has adjusted move distance. Let's call this. For ray cast adjusted move distance. And we will do the same thing down here for quote. Ceiling ray cast adjusted move distance. And that will turn into our ceiling move distance, whatever that ends up being. Uh, so, four ray hits, we want ceiling ray hits. Only four ray hit. We don't want to deal with that. Only ceiling hits. And likewise, IDs here need to be ceiling IDs. Alright, now let's take a look. This is okay. That's our overlap code. And then new, we don't need the line graph potentially. Eh, we could. Nah, fuck it. We'll put it in once we need it. I'm not gonna do additional math that may or may not be needed, so that's just gonna lead to inefficiency. Um, for which part? I took out the line ref. I mean, we're gonna need it eventually, but I'm not sure how we're gonna store that yet anyway, so I'm gonna leave it out and we'll add it back in when we decide that we do need it. Save the distance, well, that. Continue looking in case there are other results. Hiring of differences that don't mean anything right here. Yeah, okay. This is pretty much what we're left with. It's a little skeletal, but it is what it is. Uh, we technically don't need anything but this. But just in the sake of consistency, we'll move it this way. Because we will have to add on to this later anyway. That's the, uh, the overlap thing, so if things are within a certain tolerance that we also this like where we had the overlapping colliders make sure that we got all the mm -hmm. results that we needed that's, that's basically what this does so i'm gonna leave it there it'll be like half functioning for now but it, it won't matter so much so now we need to pick which move distance is the base And so the easiest way to do this right now is just going to be if ceiling move distance is less than what move distance? Or, oh, I'm sorry. It should be this. The adjusted. Uh, uh, what's her name? Before to walk.
Yeah, so if that's the case, then move distance becomes the shorter of the two. And we'll reverse it down here. So else if that, and then the else doesn't matter. It could be either or if they're equal, then it just is what it is. So if walk distance is less than ceiling distance, then the walk distance is what it is. And if they're equal distant, it doesn't matter. Just pick one at random. And then we go from here, we use move distance after that. So, theoretically, if this works, we should be able to put something um, in the head to prevent it from moving in. So let's see. Let's see if we can still walk first, since <laughs> there's no compile errors. Okay, we can walk. So, theoretically, what I should be able to do is do this, and you shouldn't be able to walk through it. That's true. We get errors, but, I mean, it hey, kind of uh, works. Where's the merge key? Check yeah. your Discord. Discord? No. What? What about it? Do you realize what it is? It's the main menu of x -Dive. Width? A model. Mm. Yeah, that's not unusual, is it? Sex with a saber. Big deal. The model is visible. Oh! Oh, you're using the emulator. Well, you didn't tell me that. Alright, so what's it's the trick? Visible, man. What's the trick? I changed one setting to, uh... Is it like a graphic setting? Yeah, it's just, uh, it's, uh, compatible. Open gliding instead of enhanced compatibility mode. Hmm. Yeah, it just works. That's cool. Hmm. Okay, we're half there. So let's see. Where... If move distance... Do the walk. Alright, do the walk. There's a thing here that pushes him back just a little bit. So that he doesn't get stuck in a wall. In fact, let's see if he gets stuck on the left wall here. He doesn't. So there's only something where the head movement... ...is what's wrong here. Oh, you know what it might be? So what we're doing is we're still capturing a line reference from the floor. And we're still using that. Well, no, it shouldn't transition, though. this before why is this before the transition code? So that's a glitch already. I don't think this even matters. You shouldn't be transitioning until you walk to the end. Um, so let's get rid of that. So this thing should tell it not to transition, because the walk- oh! Oh, look at this stuff. We're only checking the walk- that's why, because we're only checking the walk just- no, we're not checking the actual adjustment. Uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, what is- is there original move distance? Right? No, wait, hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's do this reverse. So if move distance is less than the ray, the walk ray, whatever we ended up with the walk ray. So if we chose the other one instead, or it got adjusted below that, then we don't want to do this transition 
or movement or something. And if we see something we don't like, we need to back away from it. I think a little bit. I don't know. Let's see if this works. Tim's totally checked out at this point. Just sending me shit on Discord. Head in the game, Tim. Head in the game. <laughs> I know you code. Eh, it's still going. Huh? I can jump out, but it's still stuck. It's all in half. Hey, he gets stuck over here. I think he's not getting pushed back out. Uh, we have to treat it like a... We have to treat it like he hit a wall that he can't transition to. So... I know how to do this. Okay. We just have to make a flag that we pick the ceiling. So... You wouldn't call it shit if you check what I sent you on Discord. I saw what you sent me. It's cool, but I'm I'm working on this. <laughs> Still not shit. <laughs> Um, wait, how do we want to do this? In other words, Mark, you're data mining. No, I, I know. You can data mine APKs, like, super easy. I'm not surprised by that at all. Uh, floor. Uh, this is kind of a poor, poor way to do this, but we might need more nuance than that. And then... If they're the same, then we'll say we pick the floor array instead of the ceiling. Because they're the same anyway, it doesn't matter. So if we picked... We have to do this beforehand, so... Where does other code here? Just, yeah, step us back. No, that's not it. Steps us backwards if we find a collider that we don't like. We say no bueno, uh, but step back just a little bit. I think it's this part. So, this, because this is now farther along than doing the walk, we don't want to do that. Um, we don't want to do that here. We've already walked. We don't want to do the walk there. God damn it. This is pissing me off. <laughs> it's kind of like you, you want to do it before, but you can't do it. You'd have to backstep it after. Um, we could always unwalk him in the other direction, but that seems. Uh, how to say. It doesn't seem right. You should do all your adjustments first. Then decide if you're gonna walk. We might have to check the collider first and determine if we're going to walk it, and then only transition after that. So, yeah, let's do that. We have to split this up. So, we have to do the wall check, and then we have to add a region here that's um, validate collider transition. And then so, uh, uh, bool, transition, valid, say it's false at first, uh, we're gonna copy, copy all of this, and we're gonna strip out the actual application, we only want the validity. So we're going to calculate the angles, we're going to check all that shit, but we're going to not do this. This stuff is not what we want. And we're not going to do... Actually, we will do this here. We will do this here. This actually solves the issue we were having. 
we set back the move distance a little bit so that we're not touching it. So transition to new collider. So then we want to say that transition valid is true here. If not, we shoot out the warnings. And then we replace all those conditions here with this. And then we don't worry about this. We've already done this. We've already done this. We've already done this. So we're really just looking at this. Um, we do need the max angle results, current, war, line breath. Um, we do need the... Is that a flow? Max Or, you know. Oh, I see. I see. I see. It's that. Let's do this. Hold this out here. Now it'll be accessible down here. Yeah, so if transition is valid, then for uh, Twitter, we'll take that note, because that code moved up here. That's our, um, oh, that one's here. It's our check to make sure that we're still actually doing this. So we validated it up here, but we did not actually transition. We hold that transition. So if transition is valid, um, and then we did transition to the wire, it would be old stuff. So that might fix it. Conceptually, it sounds like it should fix it. We'll find out. Uh, huh, nope. Well, maybe we need another condition. I think that's why I made the pick ceiling, right? So... Yeah, alright. Yeah, so... Else if... So we have to say pick... Floor... Right. Also, if it did pick the ceiling ray, then we're going to do this move distance adjustment. Because, you know, that's what we want. And then we want to also not run the other code if you pick the ceiling ray. Because it's not valid. There we go. Okay, we're not stuck anymore. Uh, it will bitch if we try to move into it, but that's fine. That happens in other situations too. There we go. So we can't move into it because our head bumped into it. And we get stuck on the other side. That's great. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, this one's interesting. So, what happened here? That should say that it should have picked four ray if they're equal. These should be giving equal results, but I don't know. Let's find out if they really are not. So I'm gonna move that off to the side, then trigger it, and we get move distance zero, zero. So it should be picking this up. It does. Okay. So it should make a transition here. Transition distance check. The distance is less than this. Okay, I think that's why it's failing. If our actual move distance is less than the walking distance. Am I doing this backwards? Hold on. 
So we, we want to say that the move distance has to be, if we are to transition, our move distance cannot be different than the walking cast, because that would infer that our walking cast went farther. So the walking cast has to be greater than the move distance for it to fail. So I think I got that backwards. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we, we had that code in the uh, other one, right? No, this is stuff I added today. So no, in the other gray. No. No, we didn't. No? I have to differentiate them now because they're two different ones. So we're picking move distance as whoever was the shortest between the ceiling and the wall and the walk. Yeah. Um, and then I check after if we are transitioning. So if we did pick the four ray, that this should be at the front here. I'll do less checks. So if we did pick the four ray, and if the four ray or the walk ray, then we call this walk. If the walk ray is greater, if it hits something greater than what we ended up with as our actual move distance, then that's bad. That means that we have not reached whatever it's trying to transition to, and we need to back pedal on that and say, oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. So if it's attempting to transition, pick the walk ray. And then now, the walk ray was less than move distance. Should be less than or equal to, I think. So move distance is greater than or equal to the walk distance. Then we have to do this transition. But if it's less than the walk distance, we don't want to do this transition. So I think it's right now. Maybe. <laughs> Confusing myself here. Hmm. Okay, the right side still works. Wouldn't that tested? It works, yeah, it works. Uh, assuming that I can go backwards too, so you can see how it reacts. Mm -hmm. um, what if you... Oh, and I don't like that. And we got the time up signal. So. Uh, the we memories. Got, we got kind of far. The memories, Mark. Memories of what? Of uh, bug. Is it a problem at this point that uh, the top center point is in the collider? It, it is. That's why this one failed. Because it's trying to transition in a condition that it would fail. Well, I'll turn the rotate body on. Uh, sure. That. I don't know if that'll work or not. Just... Now we're really fucking with it. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, it works that way. So that that's it. Like in this stage, you should be able to walk around the entire thing. Yeah, except you can't, can't transition to this because you're bumping your head. You're not walking to it. So that's well, it's automatically point. detecting it. <laughs> yeah, that's correct behavior. That's amusing. Uh, yeah, it's it's running through 100 cycles, so we'll have to fix that. But that's fine. I mean, it, it logically at least it's working. And so, if I move this down, then we can walk on it. So, there's that. Um, what I would like to do here, I'm going to pause it and I'm going to move him. Uh, or actually, I can jump him. That's right. What am I doing? Oh, uh oh, oh. <laughs> Gravity is different. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Alright, so what I want to know is, is will he bump his head here? He does. And he won't go inside of it. Cool. So we're making strides. Look. Yeah, I see it. Cool. Yay! 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 But that's giving a million errors, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, we're gonna have a whole shit ton of errors. Um. Yeah. So that works. And if we jump into it, then it goes all fucked up because of course it does. <laughs> yeah. But it actually works pretty well here. He won't go into this. That's funny. Um, but if he rotated into it, that would be bad news bears. 
he would he would just rotate right his head right into it. That's not good. Um, we can simulate that actually. So if we make if we pull Biggie up a little bit, then that should uh, should cause him to. Yeah, I know he's. Well, he's not actually stuck. That's funny. He actually can go back. I don't know why, but he... Oh, you know why? Because last glider um, omission, I think. He can actually go backwards. If he gets stuck in a rotation like that. That's actually a neat uh, failsafe that I didn't intend to build in, but apparently it's there. That's cool. We were actually talking about this potential uh, issue earlier today. The fact that if yeah. you hit this point and then you rotate into it, because if we stop this and... Um, step through it. You see we reach this point, and then we go from that rotation to this rotation. Uh, it's like, okay, so what happens? That's like, that's bad, right? And apparently it sort of works. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad! I mean, we can't move to the right, so it kind of works. Yeah. I mean, not it's that fixable, we're... but it's bad. It's still yeah. bad, but... It, it's bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. It could have yeah. been stuck completely, and that would be really bad. I think it's because he's still transitioning on that point. Um, yeah, maybe. Because he's on that point, so if he turns around, he doesn't actually move, he just transitions without moving. Which rotates him back and causes him to break free of it. But, yeah, okay, so it kind of works. Oh, my water bomb. Kind of works. Uh, still not... Still not happy about uh, hitting his head, I think. So let's see what happens. Yeah, he's not happy about that. It's not... So uh, also, it doesn't it doesn't uh, fire this ray in the fallen code anyway, so it, it kind of doesn't matter. So okay, that's fine though. Whatever. It, it's progress. We're getting there. It's gonna take yeah. a while, but we're getting nice. there. Yeah. So cool. All right. Well, thank you, Tim. Um. And, oh, well, we could stop just in time to see the Guilty Gear presentation. What Guilty Gear presentation? A uh, new Guilty Gear game got announced, and apparently they're doing some kind of presentation. Right now, Tokyo Game Show, that's on. Uh, huh. Yeah, so... I... Honestly, I'm not even sure where it is. I, I know I retweeted it, but I don't remember where <laughs> that is. Um, so let's see. Oh, right here. Um... Eastern Standard Time... Oh, 10.45? 10.45. Okay, so we still got like an hour. Uh, is gonna be there. Uh, he's the general director. And then Akira Hitano is listed as director. And... Oh, it's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah, okay. Okay, apparently like it's live right now. But it's... Probably the Guilty Gear segment is not on? I don't know, let's see. Let me pull it up. I'll put it in chat too if anybody wants to. Also, what? Other side. Um, yeah, I guess so they're showing. They're showing a schedule, but you can't read it because. Yeah, one hour left, boys. Okay. Yeah, so it's still an hour left. One hour till GG. Yeah, yeah. For Guilty Gear. Okay. So, it's a good place to, to end it here. <laughs> and, uh, I guess I'll go watch the, the Guilty Gear. So, we did good. We did good. We got the ceiling ray in it. At least that's its basic concept. And, um, at this point, what I, what I might do is um so i think the next step what i might do is put in the width of the of the collider just for that so that we cannot approach the wall closer than the end of our collider that's going to take a little work to build into this so, so it's not something i can do quick that i'm thinking of at least but hey we're getting there a little bit by little bit right 
Mm-hmm. So yep. a little bit by little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. and we'll we'll do that. So we will not be able to walk up walls anymore once the uh, <laughs> once the wall check gets in. Um, hmm. Yeah. Well, oh, well for my- now because it, it'll just say you know we're gonna adjust you only. Because it, it's going to be because of the head ray. The head ray doesn't know that what's a four and what's not. It just knows it hits something. So it'll say, hey, we can't approach this object, whatever the fuck it was that I found, um, with any, um, I don't want to put it. There's a tolerance. It's going to push you back by the, by the width of your thing. So you can only get this close to the wall. But you need your center point to get to the wall to transition to it. And then to then walk up it as we have it. Well, we can still walk on walls if we have the. Oh, we can make it happen. We can make it, it happen. That's fine. Yeah. I'm just saying that right now, that's going to break that functionality, but we can return it later. It's just yeah, it's sure. it's not intelligent enough yet to to handle this, but it, it's it shouldn't be too bad to get that to work. In fact, what I'm thinking is. Uh, if you are here and you are up against the wall and the floor, what it can do is do uh, an area cast or an overlap cast at the um, at your height or width, whichever is bigger. So your maximum area, which would be in this case be the height, times two. So you would do height this way and height that way, and you would say, um, "Is there anything here? Are we clear?" on here to then rotate our body to the left and then walk up the wall. You could do something like that. So that if you are in a, in a position where you've fallen through a crack like this, that you can't ro- then rotate and then be stuck in there. Yeah. You do something like Might that. Might be. But yeah, anyway, we'll, that's for we'll later. See. So yeah. Anyway, cool. So that's much you did a good mark. Oh boy. Oh boy, we got we got zero. And I don't know, I'll show that one. That one's pretty cool, actually. Um, their data mining authority. <laughs> it's, it's funny. He just did fucking things out one day. Everybody's like, ah, oh, let's open up the AP, uh, the APK and get everything. That's cool. That's cool, Black Zero. I like that. I like the swirl yes. that they put on here. I don't know why it's there, but it just looks cool. It is. It's yeah, it looks pretty awesome. Yeah. So this is the not X8 version though. X8 had white hair, and um, yeah, still cool though. Still cool. I know yeah, so now you know it is in the game. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I expected it though because X has got different skins. So yeah, let's. I'll show the other one too. Right here. Fucking copy it here. Oh, that's tiny. Oh wait, no, it was shrunk. Oh, nice. So there's Alto and Armor, which we know is in the game already, it's in the beta, which is cool. Um, but, yeah. There is that. You'll notice that the uh, internals for X actually don't match the new uh, art. No, they don't. But because it's the armor, I guess it's different. I don't know. You know whatever. They just do what they want. <laughs> They just do what they want. None of it makes sense. What's the new art for? Maybe next nine? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Could be. And this guy is the, the artist here. Um, you know, Kei? Mm-hmm. Kesuke Mizuno? Mizuno? Mm. He's really doing a lot more than he's ever done all of a sudden. For Mega Man, at least, yeah. I yeah, mean, I assume they Mega had Man. him on other projects, but... Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, w- but... I wouldn't be surprised if they bring him in for next nine. Hey, probably. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, he, he's been the artist ever since Maverick Hunter. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And he did great on Maverick Hunter. That's right. And all yeah. of a sudden, he has to like draw all these characters again and again and again. Hey, that's that's he's work for you. That's why I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Capcom says draw this. You say okay. <laughs> you sign in my but checks. Probably, okay. <laughs> like I'm saying, he's probably enjoying himself now. You have to draw oh, all the characters. <laughs> yeah, if he likes Mega Man. I mean, I assume so. Uh, but even if you didn't, I guess I can still force him to draw it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't He's know. pretty much the exterior arts now. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it, at that point, if he didn't want to do it, you would. It's it's gonna get interesting if he has to draw an actual zero series character. 
Well, they did say... And make it match. They did officially say that other char- or characters from other parts of the timeline are planned to show up in X-Dive if, one, the game is successful, and two, mm-hmm. that it generates um, enough interest to get to that point. So like, okay, yeah, it made back a profit, yeah. but it's not doing gangbusters, so we're not gonna we're not gonna bother filling it with updates. You know what I mean? But you know, mm-hmm. if, if if the hype train's going and they do good, they said that eventually, you know, down the line they're gonna add those characters, but they will not be will say, the ones that they add first. I will say he's really stepping up to the plate with his art. Like he's actually improved his style. I think so. I think so. There's a bit more of a, a consistent overall look between all the styles that Magmanix has ever had. It seems like mm-hmm. the middle ground or, or rather the perfect adaptation of all the aspects of the previous official arts into one. Yeah, like, a, like I was saying, it, it, it seems to pass for both Sensei art and X8 art at the same time. Yes, exactly. You, you get a little bit a little bit thicker on the boots, a little bit bulkier, but it's, it's a bit more refined and, and I don't want to say simplified, but the shapes seem to be a bit less. I don't know. So that's the shading. Yeah, look at here. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. The the highlights and everything's all super good. It's really good. And they got the the backlighting. He's really good. I'm 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 liking the effects on the. Uh, oh, this the shots and stuff. Uh, my only uh, concern with that set is monster shots actually like green and teal. So I don't know why it's red here. Not sure if they oh, plan well. on changing that. Or he's trying to make like the inside of the buster and the shot look the same, which, okay, I, I kind of understand that, I guess. He's just shooting a mini lemon. Hmm? Yeah, a mini lemon. Really the best. <laughs> it's, a, it's a spicy lemon, see? So it's got the red and the yellow. <laughs> right? It's, it's, a, it's a half charge. Uh... Yeah, it's a half charge. Spicy lemon. Half charge, spicy lemon. Well, the half charge is green, too, so that doesn't Oh, no, it's a lemon. Mm. It's a lemon. <laughs> spicy lemons so yeah I don't know it'd be cool it'd be cool the the animation of of X putting the armor on was actually pretty cool too so I don't know uh, maybe, maybe we'll stream something with that if it if it ends up working in co-op I'll be interested in it again that stream ends now now we're uh, switching to X that stream <laughs> yeah I was gonna say no but I, yeah I gotta I wanna watch the Guilty Gear thing anyway so tomorrow maybe maybe we'll think about it see, see I mean we, we it's got. beta it's beta week Kids? Yeah, I don't know how long it's going for. That's a good question. Um, so, take the opportunity. Yeah, alright, fair enough. We'll, we'll plan on tomorrow then. Mm-hmm. And see if it works. You know, if it doesn't work, it's gonna be shitty. But hey, if I, can, if I can see the text, but it was in Knox, right? It was in the Knox player? Yeah. That's the one you're using because you can see the menus and you can also see X now because of the changes you made. Okay. It's not piracy because it's a free game. <laughs> no, it's not piracy. No, you you can load the Play Store on Knox Player and Boost. Yeah, it's not, yeah. I, I actually bought Adventure of Mana on the Play Store and then loaded it into Boost X so I could play it uh, because my so can... phone is shitty and I don't have a tablet. It's only a part of the phone, but. A pirated phone. <laughs> Look, an emulator itself isn't piracy. <laughs> No, it's Tell fine. Android. Uh, what is Google, what is Google, Tell it's Google. Google makes boost stacks though, don't they? Or they they had a hand. Who knows? It, so. Really? I forget. I thought that they made it. Maybe they sold it off or something. But either way, uh, it, the boost yeah, actually uh, registers never... as a Google Pixel. So uh, the Play Store thinks it's a Google Pixel. So uh, Google it's an actual company making it at least. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. They, they may have sold off the emulator and someone else does it. Or if it's like the alphabet thing where they had to sell it off as part of the, the anti-monopoly um, call or something like that. I don't know. Either way, it's 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 pretty legit. Blue Snacks is pretty legit. It's, it's kind of turned into a, hey, play games on your PC that you could play on the phone. And it, they turned the OS into a game, too. It's a little weird, but it, at least it had humble beginnings. <laughs> Anyway, whatever. So, yeah, uh, fuck it. We'll, we'll do it tomorrow. That's fine. Uh, what time are you back tomorrow? Same as today. Same as today. Okay, so... 
No, no, fuck it. Seven. We'll do... Or six. Seven. Yeah, we'll do seven. Same time as normal. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you did good today. Yeah, thank you. And, and you know, you helped me figure out some education shit and stuff too, so... Don't, uh, don't discredit yourself. Yeah, it's original. <laughs> Oh yeah, here, here's where I was like, yeah, edge case for rotate with a surface. Yeah, this is what we were thinking would actually happen. We saw that actually happen. Of course, it actually got he got like literally trapped in, but he was able to get out, which was funny. But yeah, okay, so tomorrow at seven we'll be back with apparently uh, Mega Man X Dive or Rock Man X Dive. We'll do whatever you want to call it, and I'll make sure that it actually works for me and not square. And you gotta so, say it like yeah. you gotta say it in Taiwanese. You gotta say what? You gotta say like the Taiwanese. Like the Taiwanese? I don't know how they sound, so I'm not even, I'm not even gonna bother trying that. <laughs> fuck that. But I'll fuck I think it it's up. Rockman. Rockman. Rokuman X Daibu. I guess that's just Japanese. I don't know. Whatever. No oh, way. I'm so feeling confused. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's the third. Thing. That's fine. so. Yeah. All right. Cool. We'll do that, and then Monday I'll be back. Again, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Pocket Fighter EX. And then next Thursday, we'll be back again with more Retro Mansion stuff. And if Tim's here, we'll probably be doing programming. And if Tim's not here, then I'll probably be doing sprites. I'm not here. You're not here. <laughs> so I might be doing sprites. Depending on where we are in the code. If it's a part where I have to really think and design something, then it's just going to be me sitting there in silence, staring at the screen, scribbling shit in here for like two hours and nobody's gonna want to see that. <laughs> There's too much thinking, too much thinking to talk. If I have a plan, I can actually enact it and explain it. So we'll see. Oh! Uh, well, while well, we're on the topic of x though. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, let me get to your uh, Discord. We have an interesting confirmation here for the first time. I was suspecting it. I was suspecting it. Hey, right, you guys ready? Everybody knew. Everybody wanted him to be in here. Massimo. I was expecting it. As, as soon as Cinnamon showed up, and then Marino showed up, I was like, they're gonna have Massimo. There's no fucking way they're gonna leave him out. No way. There's no way. Why would you leave him out? Look, he's got a big ass axe. You gotta put him in. <laughs> now, does he also get a double jump? It's kind of weird. <laughs> totally. Axel doesn't have his hovering ability, which doesn't make sense to me. He has a double jump. So Mark, take a look. Uh, another one? Yeah, okay. Oh, wait. Huh. Alright, alright. I'll do this one first. Is this... I did not know about this one. That's cool. So, we might get all the armors for X. So, that's the Giga Armor. Well, okay, the fans call it the Giga Armor. I don't know if that is an actual name. Second Armor. Uh, did, he, did we ever even confirm that that was true? Or we just assume it because the fourth one was called the fourth armor. We have some model kits called uh, with things like first, second, and third. Oh, we do. Oh, really? Okay. Fair enough. All right. But a mostly Giga armor. Giga armor is a Mega Mission armor. Oh, it is. Okay. So people, the fans, have actually called this one Giga armor. So that, I guess that's just the armor in Mega Mission Two can do the Giga uh, attack as well. Okay, I, that's probably why they called this one the Giga Armor. The fans like, oh, you do the Giga Attack, right? Well, that must be Giga Armor. Yeah, the Giga Crush. Yeah, or the Giga Crush, yeah. Well, they gave it to the uh, the Mega Man as well. And they called that the Giga Armor. Okay, so this one's second and the other one's Giga. At least as far as we know. Yeah, so we don't really have names for these. They're also called Max Armors, or... Yes, uh, the uh, the X3 one, the fan term is Max Armor. Well, not X3, it's just that that means that all the parts have been acquired. No, I mean, like, people literally call X3 specifically the Max armor, though. No, I'm saying is, uh, based on the kits, Max just means full. Okay. And then Hyper Max means the Hyper Chip and the full armor. Yes, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Which is the golden version. Alright, we ready for OC land? Get ready. Get ready, it's DeviantArt all over again. So this, I don't know, somebody snapped a screenshot of this Zero OC looking motherfucker. Yeah, you stop one stage short. Oh, okay, so him. he's like a boss, I guess. No, he's a cutscene kicker. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, he's probably going to turn into a boss. I assume he's an enemy. I don't... Not the boss. Oh, really? Huh. Please, he's at the end of the beta. Okay. No, uh, mid-play the beta. Really? 
Wait, so... Okay, you're still one stage short. Oh, I stopped one stage short. Okay. I thought you meant it was one stage short of him being fought or something. Uh, you stopped one stage short. Okay. Well, I couldn't walk back in after. He like, is part of the deep log. Yeah. Whatever. He's an OC. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. He's, he's, he's X10. But without the Z's, he's got he's got more boob lights, but they're on his shoulders. X10 freezer version. Yeah, kind of. And he's got some weird fucking like I don't know. It looks kind of dumb though. It, it's he... a total OC. Well, there, there's a reason why he looks like zero. And they address it. Yeah. When do we get to the deviant art level? Because he's probably the boss of the deviant art level. <laughs> well, I think the implication is that there's going to be versions of this for X uh, X1 and the other guys as well. I figured as much. They're either evil clones or something, or whatever. Because look, you can't have just zero OCs. You have to have X OCs too, right? That's how it works. Well, if you get it running on Nox, we can actually text you know what this deal is. Yeah, that's true. Because you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah. Alright, yeah, so we'll we'll do that tomorrow then. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Same as usual. Sounds good. We'll play the shitty mobile game. Alright, it's not that bad, but... It certainly doesn't control as tight as the console games. I think it's good. I kind of like this design, but it's weird because it's zero. Yeah, know? yeah. I was going to say, it looks more like something like a duo-esque kind of design, but with Zero's head slapped on top of it. It's, it's really weird. Like, the Zero elements ruin it, basically. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. That's what makes it weird. So if you didn't have Shadow Phase Zero and you put, like, someone else's head on it, it would probably be okay. Like, the legs are, eh, legs are meh. Maybe change something there, but, like, the rest of it, yeah, it's okay-ish. Well, I'm saying there's, there's zero elements of it, but the things like the gems and stuff? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is cool. Alright, anyway, I'm getting out of here. So, it's, uh, it's 10 already. And, uh, Just we'll be up. back tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And, uh... Mark, Mark, Mark. You what? gotta say the name. Say what name? The name. What name? What name? Well, the people will support you. Oh, yeah, I'm getting Our to parole? that. I'm getting to that. You're cutting me off. I literally just pulled up the list and you cut me off. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is he talking The name. No, names. Plural. The name you enjoy. Oh, yeah, Corporal Chungus. <laughs> so we got Zombie Killer. We got Corporal Chungus. Uh, we got Jerry Berry. We got Taryn Williams. <laughs> AJ and Bryce Nagalinum, they are the the top patrons, so the generals in the Scrub Army. And if you too want to be part of the Scrub Army, you can get early builds of the projects that I lead. You can get code samples, utilities, stuff like that. Uh, the link for that is down below. Keeps the lights on, sort of. Keeps the keeps the stream equipment happy and and my uh, Photoshop paid up so that I can actually do something. It helps. Bottom line is it helps. So, uh, all that stuff goes back into the stream and, and into, you know, making the projects. Supporting me in my endeavors in the projects. So, if that sounds interesting, uh, that's done. Well, other than that, I guess we're done. Scrub out. I'll see you tomorrow and Monday and next Thursday. Adios. And that's it, I guess. Scrub out. There you go. I was waiting for it. All right. See you guys later.